Jesse Jackson left Operation Push to run for the Presidency of the United States, and Reverend Willie Barrow helped to orchestrate that campaign. Now Reverend Barrow has returned to hold the reins as National Executive Director of the powerful Push organization. What is her agenda for People United to Save Humanity? How does she see the future of this prominent organization and her own prominent role within it? I'm Joan McGrath. A conversation with Willie Barrow pushed into the limelight next on Dimension. Welcome to Dimensions. I'm Joan McGrath, and my guest is the Reverend Willie Taplin Barrow, who is now the National Executive Director of Operation Push. One can only say that if it took this last presidential campaign, Operation Push is certainly now in the national limelight. Unfortunately, there's some confusion, I think, Reverend Barrow, as to what Operation Push really is. Is it a political organization, a religious organization? Is it ultimately a platform for Reverend Jesse Jackson? Uh, first, Joan, let me thank you for inviting me to be the guest on Dimensions, and I'm just extremely happy to be present. Uh, I, I guess I would like to say first that Reverend Jackson has not left Operation Push, is that he stepped over in order for me to step in. So you are and acting as president, which was the capacity that he was in, well, as well as national executive director. Well, right now, yes, until uh, I am looking for a national president at this point. Uh, but now I serve as the national executive director, which, which I serve with the day-to-day -day operations. You know, we have a staff. I'm concerned about uh, whether they come on time, or whether they're going to be late. The programs of Operation Push have to be implemented. I'm that person that does the implementation of the programs. And also, we have a, a Saturday morning community forum, which is part of our program that we've been had for over 18 years. And I have been the producer of that program for years until I went on the campaign with Reverend uh, Jackson. I took a leave when he took a leave. So I'll be doing the day-to-day -day operations uh, looking into the budget, into the fundraising, and that kind of thing. All right, so let, let's get back to my question for yes. a moment. For people that don't understand the purpose, the function for Operation Push, put it in 25 words or less. What Oper are you about? Uh, Operation Push is, a, is the economic arm of the civil rights organization. It uh, started out as Operation Breadbasket under the Southern Christian Leadership Conference where Dr. Martin Luther King uh, was uh, the president. And, uh, and of course, Operation Push was the economic arm. Operation Push is not a church. It is a, it is a religious-based organization. It is exactly what it says, people. It's an acronym of people united to serve humanity. And our organization is a service organization. And we serve people all the way from, from people whose gas are turned off, who have no heat, who have no food, those who are homeless. And also, we also deal with corporate America in terms of equity and parity in the economic arena. Reverend Jesse Jackson was around from the beginning. He was the catalyst for the formation of Operation Push. Can that organization exist apart from him? Can the images of Jesse Jackson and Operation Push be parallel, but not always together? It did exist. The Operation Push produced a presidential candidate. It produced Jesse Jackson. Uh, for 18 years, we were making a presidential candidate. For 18 years, when we, were, when we were getting people to register and vote, when we were fighting bad education, when we were fighting bad meat, when we were fighting uh, bad politics, we were fighting then. To, to bring uh, uh, the right direction, to create the kind of atmosphere where we can have not only one show horse, but a wagon full of horses running for political offices. Are you the next of the kings to be made? Uh, no, I'm a queen. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a queen. And I was very happy to have taken uh, a leave of absence with Reverend Jackson uh, to run a as he ran for president November the 3rd. 
I was just happy to do so because it was Operation People United to, 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 to serve all over the, um, the nation. Didn't it you was about 75 chapters we had. So everywhere we went, Joan, doing, we wasn't like the average candidate. They had to go and try to make audiences and try to uh, send people in advance. We already had our advanced people. We've covered about every major city and state in this nation. Let's talk about that campaign for a couple of moments. The Democratic organization already had a powerful and in-place organization to deal with the whole concept of campaigning. You were a neophyte. How'd you know where to begin? That's what they thought. But then after, you know, I think Reverend, uh, Reverend Jackson ran a campaign uh, in voter registration. We put over two million new voters on the books. His campaign received 3.5 million votes. We won 60 congressional districts, 30 in the South. We, we, when they told us we, we, wouldn't, we wouldn't be able to get but about uh, 200 delegates, we got over 465 delegates. In fact, we should have had 800 delegates because part of the delegates they took from us, in, uh, if we'd have had our rightful equity and parity of delegates, we would have had 800 delegates. So not only were we uh, so-called neophytes, we won a voter registration drive without any money coming from the National Democratic Party or coming from any private source. We raised less than $3 million, which is a 99 cents a vote, which is the most cost-effective voter registration drive ever in the history of this nation. Between us, yes. did you ever really think he could win? Well, we could have won. Even the polls said if Jesse Jackson had been white, we would have won. We would have won. Jesse Jackson uh, absolutely campaigned, and we got 85% of the black vote, and we got 21% of the, of the black, uh, I mean, of the white, Hispanic, Asian vote. But if Jesse Jackson, as the Gallup poll indicated, if he had been white, he would have won. We won the debates. He was the most articulate. He had the most to offer in terms of programs, in terms of a plan. Jackson, Jesse Jackson had it all together. It just so happened, unfortunately, in 1984, that a black man cannot run for president. And really, a, a woman, as quiet as it kept, one of the reasons why the Democratic Party faltered as it did because the, the, the white males of this society was not ready to accept a woman, but let alone a black woman, but a white woman they wasn't ready to accept. So we had all of these strikes against us. Being black and being a woman was part of the, of the downfall of the Democratic Party. Will he run again? I hope so. I hope so. We are going to continue. That's why we have the Rainbow Coalition. The Rainbow po po uh, Coalition is a coalition of the progressive, women, uh, uh, Hispanics, and uh, the different facets like uh, the uh, uh, peace movements, uh, people who are seeking peace, the environmentalists, all of those facets out there who want to see a progressive movement in, in this nation. That is what the Rainbow Coalition is all about. The Rainbow Coalition is now afoot it is, it is housed in Washington, D.C. It has its own uh, board. It has its own uh, executive director, same as PUSH. I just happen to be the uh, national executive director of Operation PUSH, which still remains as the civil rights organization. But uh, I'm going to be concentrating on about five major programs. Before One, we get into yes. those programs, and I promised you we would, l let me just get back to Reverend Jackson for a moment. Mm -hmm. A lot of people are very curious about the function of his moving to South Carolina. What did it mean? Well, he has a right to first place. It, that, oh, that, I'm not challenging his right. Yeah. I'm, I'm just looking for his, his motive. His That's his home. And uh, then that is where he's going to be spending a lot of time in the South, registering people to vote, and also we're going to concentrate on those 30 congressional districts that he won. We ought to be able to get at least a minimum 
of 10 congresspersons out of the Southern District. So he um, went down there, and, 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 and he would be voting down there, and there's a possibility that he may do something even personally himself, but he will be working very feeriously to, to, uh, to, to get elected people like we've gotten in the in the past we got a wagon load of people that uh, that the press has never even um, uh, brought to visibility we got coroners we got we got uh, 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 sheriffs uh, uh, we got uh, uh, new registrars in areas where there's never been black regis uh, black reg uh, black registrars we just got a whole lot of people we want but we are aiming at changing the face of Congress and we are we are going to be concentrating very heavily on voter registration so highly until we can elect at least 10 more congressmen. And you're not putting aside the possibility that Reverend Jackson will run for Congress or Senate, or rather the House or the Senate from the state of South Carolina. That's right. What about you? Do you have political designs and aspirations? I'm just going to be sitting at the steering wheel here at Operation Push, uh, guiding uh, v voter registration, and I'm going to be heavily concentrating on the economic justice program of Operation Push, we're going to be uh, we're going to be heavily engaged with corporate America. I think at this time, where Black people are spending 170 million dollars a year, 400 uh, billion dollars a year, about 423 million dollars a day, uh, we would actually be out of focus if we wouldn't contact corporate America, especially since uh, since unemployment is high. And, uh, and, and we need, we can get jobs not only from the, from the federal government, but from corporate America. So we will be trading, asking, and sitting down around the negotiating table, uh, negotiating with corporate America, like we did ne negotiated in the past with Coca-Cola and Budweiser and, and uh, Miller Brewing and, 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 uh, and Coors and all the rest of them. And the clout that you represent is that black consumer dollar. Yes, uh-huh. Yes, that dollar must be must be put back into the community. It must be put back in black banks. We must even put it in black businesses, so that once you you know most of the employment is not in major companies. It is in small businesses. So when you make small businesses uh, viable, then you also put a lot of people back to work. So if corporate America began to relate to black business America. Um, and we are going to go back with our contracts that we have covenanted some months ago, look over those contracts and see if everybody is living up to that contract. And we have, we have, we have, we have reasonable doubt to believe that many of our people are expanding. We've got more on some areas and then less in some areas. And then we will be offering a spring offensive for new targets. Such as? Pardon me? Such as? What other new targets? Well, I don't want to name them at this point we, uh, because we want to concentrate on those that we've already covenanted with. Do you think that the black community will follow Operation Push? I mean, there's certainly been a lot of incidents w in which the community was not always available to you as a body. Well, How can you pledge Operation those black Push, dollars? Operation Push is people united, people in the community to serve humanity. We've been in existence now. Uh, for 18 years, and, and the only way we can, the only way we really survive, is through volunteer contributions, and uh, and, and and people certainly have been volu volunteering their contribution. We have a membership drive that we're initiating uh, just this month, uh, 1985 membership drive. We're asking people to join with a $10 membership. We're asking people for a day's pay or half a day's pay. And, and collect money on their jobs and bring it to Operation Push. People are doing that. People are very concerned about our own self-determination, where we are going, where women are going. You know, women are locked out. Hispanics are locked out. Um, uh, children are locked out. Our education for our children is at stake. You know, we have a strike or the impending strike that we have now. Uh, our kids in the urban cities, we're concerned about that. Everybody in the community is concerned about educating their children. Our children is the most important uh, item that we have. And, and we will go and support uh, our children, and we're going to be fighting for, for, for education for our children. Operation PUSH has always stood for excellence in education. There was a major push, push for That's excellence right. of several years ago. We confront now teachers' strikes. We confront 
a tremendous problem in the superintendent's office right here in the city of Chicago. We confront an enormous number of problems regarding the testing scores and that the kids of the city of Chicago are falling behind. What specifically can Operation Push do to change that environment? Well, what we uh, have been, we have, we have what we call a council of black leadership. Over a hundred of us met just the other night. We met, number one, on the school strike, and, and, and ministers from all across the city are meeting uh, this week on, uh, on the school strike and on the racial tension that we have in this city. And, on, and, and, and it is tremendous. It is growing. And, and we have a cause to be very frightened and very upset about Clearly. it. Clearly. What can be done, though, Reverend Barrow? Well, Talking is one thing. What can be done? Well, we have organized, number one, the ministers are going to be holding, uh, uh, when we, we talked about when the school doors close, the church doors open, our, ki our children will never be in the street because we're going to provide some kind of educational mechanism so that they can feel that they are teaching and I'm sure we have dedicated teachers that will teach. Number two is that we're asking homes to come together as we've never come together before be, be in order to deal with this, with, 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 with studying at home and also studying what is happening in our city. Um, what is happening in our city is a lot of racial tension and a lot of black on black crime. Neither one of it is good for the community Neither one of it is good for the city or for this nation. Oh, that's an understatement. It is one of the most insidious problems we have. Right. I was just out visiting the, Anders, the Sanders, Ada Sanders and her husband out at uh, 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 Artesian, 82nd and Artesian, where the firebomb was thrown the other night. And uh, her husband was just reading the paper, and, and somebody threw a, fire, a Molotov firebomb. When, when the daughter looked around, was 14 years old, the man's feet was afire, and, 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 and all of a sudden, the house was full of smoke. They had to flee in their bed clothing and call for the police. Happened the fire department got there early and put out the fire. But uh, there's a community meeting, thank God, for the priest and, and many of the parish and then many of the neighbors now. See, some white folks, many white people, they are against the same thing as we are against. They are holding a meeting with black and white coming together religious leaders and political leaders trying to deal with this situation before it get out of hand with the precedence that is set now where the the head of the affirmative action says affirmative action is dead brad reynolds you know which just really shocked me the other day that was the headlines of the paper uh, when people feel that they have no other alternative to go to they feel that they can put the law and take the law in their hands we must still say that we must, we must rest with the law and the law must run its full course and that we must be protected. And that anybody who wants to buy a home ought to have access to buy that home and live in that home without being molotoved, without being kicked and without being abused, without racial slurs and those kind of things. And I think with the Cardinal here, with Jesse Jackson here, these are great headquarter men. Cardinal Bonadin, who is the headquarter for the Catholic Church and for the Jewish community, with the Polish community, with the black community and the Hispanic community. These communities, the politicians and the religious leaders can come together. The students got to come together. The coaches got to come together. We have to have a, com a coming together so that there will be an offset on every facet of this community. I saw a picture of you with a tear in your eye after the young man from Simeon High School, the basketball star, was senselessly and brutally murdered. You mentioned a moment ago gang violence. You're talking about racial discrimination and Molotov cocktails in the city of Chicago in living rooms. It hasn't gotten any better. Don't you ever want to throw in the towel? Don't you ever get discouraged? No, I can't, I can't d get discouraged, Joan, because every time, I guess with me, and so many others knowing what the commission of God was. He gave us a commission. And, and, and that commission was the spirit of the Lord is upon me. And he has told me to bind up the brokenhearted, to set the captives free, and those that are bruised, to heal those that are bruised, and also to, to, to set a liberty to them that are poor. Our commission, our existence, our reason and purpose for being here 
is to relate to other people. When that relationship is broken down, then we as community leaders, we as leaders, we as women, we as mothers, and, and, and women who are 53% of the population who are sensitive, ought to be sensitive, and we are mothers, we also have a responsibility to, to call to order. We have to call this community to order. One of the other things, Joan, when our young people have no examples in our homes, and I, that's why I called over the weekend, I asked all of the families to call a solemn assembly. Get into your living room or get into your kitchen and just call the family together one more time. We, we are eating fast foods. We run in fast everything. We are running too fast to listen to our children. We are running too fast to hear their complaints. We need to settle down and just listen for one day. And I'm still appealing to families to just call a solemn assembly, sit down, let's talk things over, listen to our young people. That's number one. Number two then, if we sit down and talk with them, then we are calling for the city hall, who is a perfect example. You know, we have a split right down the city hall. And, and, and the scripture tells me to study war no more. Beat your spears into pruning hooks we, and, and, and your plowshares. He said, and study war no more. You there's mean, war in the city council. There's war in the home. There's war in the community. There's racial wars. There's black on black wars. We got to just sit down and act like human beings or else we're going to go up in smoke. I'm glad you brought up City Hall. Does Operation Porsche enjoy a special influence, a special relationship with Mayor Washington? Pardon me? Does Operation Push, do you, Reverend Willie Barrow, enjoy a special influence with Mayor, Mayor Washington? He's the mayor of this city. And, uh, and, and, the, and, and, and this city mandated him to be mayor. And we expect him to be mayor of this city, just like we expected Mayor Byrne and Mayor Daly. That's not answering my question, though. Do you have a special relationship? Is there an affinity with Mayor Washington? Uh, is there, is, is there an affinity just because, are you saying because he's black, do I relate to him better? No, what I'm, saying? no what I'm saying is does Operation Push, having eventually supported him in the election, does Mayor Washington eventually having supported Jesse Jackson's candidacy mean that you enjoy a special influence in City Hall? Well, first place, Mayor Washington is a black man. And Mayor Washington has worked in the black community. He was a, Congress in a ma uh, congressperson in the major black community. And now we have, uh, we mandated him to run. You see, the community at first had a great voter registration drive. Don't forget, remember, we didn't have a person to run for mayor. The community had one of the largest voter registration drive ever in the history of Chicago. And we started looking for someone to lead this city. And it happened that Lou Palmer and, and, and Conrad World and many other the black leadership leaders ran a, 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 a concern in the papers and, 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 and distributed liber uh, literature. And finally, we came up with five to 15 names. And then after that, it dwelled down to about uh, two or three names. Mayor, Has Mayor, Mayor, Mayor Washington name came up, then Mayor Byrne, and then Mayor Daly. And he happened to win. And any time that we, that the city mandates a man to win, I think Vidroliak, and the rest of them ought to let him run the city until his time is out. And then if his time is out, and if he they, it, it let the people speak again. But now we got two cities, we have two mayors, we have two of everything. That foolishness got to stop. And that is setting the, the wrong kind of precedent. And I think that we got to start at, the, at, at our home, we got to start in our neighborhood, we got to, got to start in City Hall, and we got to start right up in the White House where Mr. Reagan resides. I certainly hope they're listening to us this morning. <laughs> it is frustrating talking with you because there are so many facets of Willie Barrow that I want to explore. I want to talk about your Doctor of Divinity degree. I want to talk about your being commissioned by President Jimmy Carter to be one of the prime delegates to the International Year of the Woman. I want to talk about all those things. And yet you want to talk about some of your programs, and I'm going to give you the final moments. Operation Push has become a global organization. A lot of it has to do with the Reverend Jackson going to Syria to rescue the Navy flyer and in 79 going to the Middle East and visiting with Arafat. You too. I went. 
we went to five Middle East uh, uh, cities. We went to Israel first, and then we went to Jordan, then we went to Egypt, then we went to Beirut, and then we went to Syria. Quite now, I think once you put them in that perspective, then you can see the total perspective of why we, why we went and the, and, the, and the hearts and lives of people that we touched. Why, when there are so many problems in the city of Chicago, why when we have problems in the school, grant, gang violence, racial discrimination, why does Operation Porsche want to get involved in the Middle East? Because we serve, a, we serve a global God. So God, all of his, God loves all of his people. He loves the Middle East. He loves Central America. He loves South Africa. He loves South Mississippi. He loves North New York. He loves everybody. So our mission is not, uh, remember when Jesus walked these mundane shores? His place was Chicago, but Jerusalem. But then God told him to go to Samaria and to the uttermost part of the earth. Our commission is not just to Chicago. Our commission is all around where we can help people and help somebody. And I think Reverend Jesse Jackson has, has the kind of uh, uh, articulation, he has the kind of technical know-how, he has the kind of personality that blends. And I think God has ordained this man for such a time as this. So we delight in such a figure, in such a personality as Jesse Jackson, and not only Jesse Jackson, but, uh, but the Mayor Hatches of this world, and the Andy Youngs of this world. And the Reverend Barrows, and because Reverend now, <laughs> now the crown is on your head. Now it is you to become synonymous with the organization. I, I started to ask you before, Reverend Jackson's image is so intertwined in the image of Operation Push. Can you independently carry on that organization without him sitting on your shoulder? Well, we had the baby together. See, uh, <laughs> Operation Push was born, and uh, Reverend Jackson, you know, Reverend Jackson has been with Push 18 years. I've been with Push 18 years. We got the baby and had the baby. It is our baby. And, 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 and I guess I stayed home and took care of the baby more uh, while he was traveling all around. I did with, uh, I worked with the intricacies of the volunteers. We got hundreds of volunteers. I was, uh, I developed chapters around the nation, all of the chapters that are service, were service, I was the chapter development coordinator. And uh, so we have worked together. I think that I know his spirit, I have his spirit, I have integrity, and I'm very intelligent, and I'm very involved, and I'm very committed, and I think I can right now implement the programs in which we have already begun. Any conflict being an ordained minister, a doctor of divinity, and a political animal? No, because I think, uh, just as the Bible says, he blessed many of us with coats of many colors. He made some of us with one talent, made some of us with two, and some he made with 10. I just so happened to be blessed to be a woman, to be a minister, to be a mother, to be a wife, and to be a leader, an uh, organizer. And I am just very grateful. But to more, but one thing you have to realize, that you have to be grateful, but also to, to whom more is given, more is required. So I have a lot of responsibility and a lot of requirements. You're a remarkable woman. Thank you for coming here today. Thank I wish we had more time. The Reverend Willie Barrow, the National Executive Director of Operation Push, leading that organization post-Jesse Jackson into a lot of interesting, fascinating, and new directions. I only wish you the best. We'll be back on Dimensions next Wednesday morning. See you again then.